So here's a topic that's a real thing. Does the automatic start-stop feature we all talk about and rave about actually save you money on gas? Or is it just a marketing ploy by manufacturers, an unnecessary feature? Does it really work? Over the years, you and myself, lots of drivers have questioned whether this function is slowly ruining our cars and if the brief shutting down of our car's engine while idling actually saves us on gas. You know, you get to the stoplight, stop sign, you're stuck in traffic, and all of a sudden your car goes dead, or at least it feels like it goes dead. Is it making a difference? According to Road and Track, you've probably heard of them, this feature can actually save money on gas, according to Road and Track. Unfortunately, tracking exactly how much fuel this feature saves is hard because of how many variables go into calculating miles per gallon. We don't live in a vacuum. We're not on a isolated road just going at a set miles per gallon or miles per hour. Now, according to Road and Track, the constant stopping and starting can get pretty grating depending on which system you have and its calibration. Given the annoyance and fear of damage, a lot of drivers aren't fond of this feature, myself included. I just turn it off. I have it on a couple of my vehicles and I have it all the time with my press vehicles. But would that change if the amount of fuel saved was enough to help with the skyrocketing gas prices if you knew it worked? Despite what my Uncle Rick says he knows about cars, this isn't a matter of opinion. My friend and fellow YouTuber Jason Fenske at Engineering Explained points out that figuring out if the automatic start-stop system saves on gas is a question that needs to be answered by science and math, not Uncle Rick's opinion. One of his videos starts with, quote, how much time does it take an idling engine to use the same amount of fuel as starting the engine, end quote. Great question. If we have that answer, figuring out the efficiency of the automatic start-stop feature becomes simple to figure out. In his video, he shows two instruments with green liquid. One of these cylinders represents the amount of fuel an average-sized small four-cylinder engine burns after idling for 3.6 minutes. Very precise. The second of the two cylinders represents the amount of fuel it takes to start the same engine. The two cylinders are dramatically different. They show that 3.6 minutes of idling uses far more fuel than starting your engine does. So the question is, should you get a car with an automatic start-stop feature? In some cases, it may already have it, so you can't really deal with it. A little history lesson. In 2004, a study published in the Journal of SAE sought out to find out if these start-stop features actually saved us fuel. Again, that was a long time ago. Jason from Engineering Explained says that the study looked at two identical 1.5-liter four-cylinder Toyota engines. The researchers hooked up fuel flow meters to these engines to measure fuel consumption accurately. They idled both engines in park and in drive for an hour and a half. After those measurements were completed, they did some math. And they found that if your car idles for more than seven seconds, it would be more fuel efficient to shut your engine off and restart it when it's time to drive again. It really is fascinating to see how many drivers are wary of this system and its efficacy without ever looking at the scientific data that shows these systems work. Granted, these savings are fairly negligible in the short term, but in the long run, these systems can save money on gas and theoretically money, despite what your Uncle Rick says. So your fuel gauge isn't working correctly. What does that mean? What could go wrong? Well, it doesn't impact your vehicle operating. You'll be just fine. But when your fuel level gets low, then you could possibly run out of gas when you least expect it. Now, driving with low levels of fuel could cause some long-term problems such as clogging the fuel pump, overheated engine, and premature wear of several engine parts. Now, a vehicle's gauge system comprised of three basic parts. You've got the gauge, circuit, and sender. A fault in these parts will cause gauge failure or make it give incorrect readings. The four ways of how a fuel gauge could fail are the following. Number one, sending unit failure. This is the most common reason for a fuel gauge to not work. The gauge may read the voltage feedback from a dead sensor as full or empty. The sending unit continuously moves and rubs on the variable resistor when you drive the car. The constant friction wears off the contacts, leading to its failure. Number two, problems with the circuit. 
depending on the source of the trouble, there could be a voltage problem in the fuel sender, causing the gauge to receive no voltage response from there. Interruption in the ground for either the gauge or the fuel sender might cause the issue as well. Other reasons could be corrosion or loose connections at the fuel pump module. Number three, gas gauge failure. This is a less common but not outright impossible reason. It could happen when the internal circuit is defective, shortened, or opened. And number four, a non-functioning instrument cluster. This is the least common of all causes, and its repair is the most expensive. Most modern vehicles have a fully integrated circuit, so when one part fails, the whole unit needs a replacement. So here are some ways on how to identify a problem with the fuel gauge. For amateurs, contacting a professional mechanic is the best option, but if you have previous experience, Experience, it's easy to find out these issues with the fuel gauge reading incorrectly with these following tools. Number one, a digital multimeter. Number two, electrical wiring diagram. And number three, basic hand tools. So carry out the following test to identify the problem source of your fuel gauge not reading correctly. You could do an instrument cluster self-test. The procedure involves doing a series of tasks including switching the headlight on, press on the odometer button, etc. The task sequence could be different for older vehicles. You need to check the owner's manual to know the correct order. Next, fuel sender test. Conduct the test when the tank is lower than half to avoid splashing hot oil. Use the multimeter to check for voltage on the pins. And finally, gas gauge test. This inspection involves another voltage testing, and the reading has to be exactly the same as the fuel sender test. So that's the lowdown on why your fuel gauge is not reading correctly. If you have further suggestions or want to make some corrections or additions, please leave them in the comment section below. Here's one of those straight to the point, don't waste your time videos as opposed to what other car YouTubers do. How to get better gas mileage for your vehicle. Here it comes. Replace your spark plugs. That's number one. Sounds simple, but you can have a big impact on the operation of your vehicle, car, or truck. Did you know that having bad spark plugs can decrease your gas mileage by 30%? I didn't know that until doing the research. That's what the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence says. So if they say it, I believe it, and now you know it. Number two, low tire pressure. The U.S. Department of Energy states that 1.25 billion gallons of gas are lost every year due to underinflated tires. So be sure to check the recommended pressure required for your tires. You should be able to see the proper amount stamped on the tire. Your driving habits have an impact on your fuel economy. Speeding, accelerating quickly, hard braking all can reduce your fuel economy. Anticipating what's going on ahead of you and coasting for a bit prior to stopping will not only help in using less gas but also be better on your brakes planning your trips better scheduling your trips can help you save fuel each time you head out with a cold engine you can use more gas so if you run your errands in one voyage your engine will be warm and save you time and money removing heavy cargo this may apply better to trucks if you're hauling a lot of stuff but Let's say, for example, you use your truck to store your golf clubs or other non-essential items. Things are heavier than golf clubs as well. The extra weight will reduce your miles per gallon, so remove any unnecessary items and add money to your pocketbook or not spend so much money. Idling, a parked vehicle, and idling does nothing to improve your gas mileage. Depending on the vehicle, an engine can burn up to one quarter to one half gallon of fuel per hour. If possible, shut off your engine when you'll be stopped for a long period of time. Last but not least, using the cruise control. Driving at a steady speed on the highways can help you save fuel, so lock your speed and know that you are helping with your vehicle's gas consumption. Keep in mind that gas mileage usually declines when driving over 50 miles per hour. There you have it. I told you, short and sweet, the tips and tricks to save your vehicle's fuel economy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you soon. Adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.